Today, I'm going to talk about how to treat bumblefoot, which is the most common type of disease found in birds of prey and in most birds in general. Now, prevention is always better than the cure. And in my other videos, I often talk about how to prevent getting bumblefoot in the first place. However, in this video, I will tell you exactly how to treat bumblefoot yourself at home without having to visit or pay for a vet, hopefully. But firstly, what is bumblefoot? Well, bumblefoot is the common term used for an infection in the bird's feet. It can be caused by a scratch or a graze that then gets infected. And there are other external factors that can cause bumblefoot as well, like previous injuries, for example, and also unsanitary aviaries and the wrong type of perch. Those things can all contribute to the risk of bumblefoot. There are three stages of bumblefoot. Now, stage one is a small black or red mark, a little circle, which is the beginnings of the infection. And this is the type that can be treated yourself at home. Stage two looks more advanced. You can start to see the buildup of pus within the wound. And this is where you have to take your bird to a specialist vet who deals with birds, of course, and they will operate on that wound. They'll often leave bandage it up and there'll probably be antibiotics as well to give your bird for 10 days or two weeks. You really want to avoid that because it's going to be expensive. It's a trip out to the vet. You don't want to have to do. It's not going to be pleasant for the bird at all, and it can even cause problems further down the line for your bird, even once it's all healed up. Stage three, however, is when it's very severe and there is a high risk of the infection getting into the bloodstream of the bird, which will make that bird very ill and it will die. Now, it's really important I also mention that if you are unsure of the state of the bird's feet, if you're not sure what stage of bumblefoot it's at, or if you just don't feel confident treating it yourself, then please do get your bird to the specialist vets as soon as you possibly can and take their professional advice. So how do we treat stage one of bumblefoot ourselves? Right, we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need a couple of towels, a perch, which you should already have for your bird. Uh, a box is good as well for your bird. We're also gonna need some sponges, access to fresh water, of course, and some antibacterial creams and sprays. I highly recommend F10. This comes in different forms as well. Really good for treating infections. I've used this to cure infections on birds before, even an infection on a snake's skin as well, very successfully. And I also recommend and alternatives like this one which is a spray which can be found in most pet shops actually and that's also another good antibacterial solution. So the first thing we need to think about is keeping our bird light. So we're going to keep it at flying weight. If it's not already at flying weight, gradually bring its weight down over a few days until it's at flying weight. And you want to be flying that bird every day as well. You want to fly it as much as you sensibly can so it gets the most exercise it can. This will be really good for the bird's health and it will help with the healing up of the bumblefoot as well. Also, keeping the bird light will mean it's putting less weight on the feet. Now, when it comes to birds of prey, they will stand most of their lives. And of course, you probably already know that when they sleep, they'll lift one leg in the air and they'll at some point swap over. They're that kind of two-sided thing going on. Now, sometimes if a bird gets a poorly foot in some way and it's a bit painful, it will keep that one in the air and the other foot, the good foot, will be stood on for the majority of the time. And that's where sometimes the good foot can then get bumblefoot as a result. So we want to be thinking not just keeping our bird light, but we want to also ensure that we're thinking evenly with the feet. So we're going to treat both feet the same, even if only one foot has the bumblefoot on it. So when it comes to the perch, we want to put it on a soft perch so the best trick is to wrap a towel around the perch, just like you can see the hawk is sitting on here. 
and that's a great way for it to rest. We do not want to be using a rubber molded perch, nor do we want to be using original AstroTurf or any other AstroTurf for that matter on, on this occasion. That type of AstroTurf is great to avoid Bumblefoot, but it's not so good when the bird is healing from Bumblefoot. So we're keeping it as soft and as padded as possible and the birds nice and light. Then with the sponge, give the feet a little wipe down gently with water and then use your anti-back gel or cream and use it plentiful. In fact, I would apply it twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. So we're gonna keep our bird light, we're gonna keep it on a soft perch with a towel, we're gonna fly it every single day and we're going to apply twice a day the antibacterial cream. The only other thing to do is to monitor every day your bird's feet, having a good look underneath. Now, this is why we should be checking feet every single day to ensure they are nice and clean and clear. And if you spot something early, you can then apply these measures. But it's also a good idea to use antibac on your bird's feet, maybe once or twice a week, just to kind of create a barrier to try and avoid bumblefoot occurring in the first place. I hope you found this video useful. Please do comment and add your questions below. Thanks for watching.